Hi, I'm Mike Robichaud, head of guitar repairs for Long & McQuaid, and I'm going to show you how to change a string on a locking trim guitar. So before we get started, it's important to understand a little bit about how a locking trim works and why it's designed the way it is. The whole idea here is maximum tuning stability by eliminating as many variables as we can from the string itself. So instead of relying on a traditional ball end to anchor the string at the bridge, it's actually just clamped in place. Each one of the saddles is a little vise that actually locks the string into place at the bridge. There's nothing going on behind the scenes that can shift around or change position on you. It makes the tuning a lot more stable. The same principle applies at the headstock. Although the strings are attached in the usual manner with uh, wrapped around the tuning posts, they're locked out at the locking nut. So once these locks are clamped down, anything that goes on at the tuning machines doesn't affect the guitar's tuning. So the strings are completely locked right where the fretboard begins, and they're completely locked right where the bridge begins, and nothing that happens before or after that can really affect it, cause it to go out of tune. So this design has eliminated a few of the key points where a traditional guitar, the strings can slip, they can move around, they can reposition themselves and cause it to go out of tune. The locking trim avoids all of that. It does make it a little more difficult to restring though, but it's not that hard. So the first step is to unlock the nut. Make sure you've got the right size wrench here. If you bought your guitar new, it almost certainly came with the right size wrench. You can remove that block completely. Uh, just take note of the orientation so that you can put it back on the same way it came off. Now, we'll remove the old string, take all the tension off. I strongly, strongly recommend you do one string at a time. rather than taking all six off at once. So now with it disconnected up at the headstock, we're going to disconnect it at the bridge. So these Allen screws that come off the back are what are actually clamping the string in place. So again, the appropriate wrench, just loosen that off just slightly, really like half a turn is generally enough. And we can take the string out. And now we see really how the bridge works. There's no ball end on this, it's just a bare string and it only goes a couple of millimeters down into that bridge saddle. And so the string goes down, this screw tightens up and it clamps the string in place. It's just a little mechanical vise that holds the string in place. Now one important thing to know is this little block in here that actually clamps the string in place, it is loose. It can actually fall out of the guitar. So if you have this screw backed off all the way and maybe you're cleaning the guitar, if you flip it over, the block can fall out and guaranteed it will get lost. They can be replaced, but be aware of it. It's, uh, it's a real pain to replace them. So don't flip the guitar over, or if you do, put a piece of tape over it or something like that. So now it's time for the new string. So the first step is to cut the ball end off because locking trims do not use ball ends. With the saddle opened up enough so that the string can comfortably go down in and it, it only goes in just to the about two, two and a half millimeters, just to the bottom of the saddle. You don't have to force it way down. There's, there's nowhere extra for it to go. So we just place it down in Tighten up the screw. Make sure the string is nice and centered. It's not off in the corner or anything like that. And tighten it up. Now you do need this to be fairly tight, but you, you don't want to crush it down. It's possible to strip this hardware out. Um, a good rule of thumb is, uh, you know, kind of as tight as you can with your left hand, if you're right-handed. Um, otherwise, better to err on the side of caution. If you go too tight, you can strip the hardware out. You can damage it. You have to replace parts. If you don't tighten it enough, all that's going to happen is the string will pop, pop out on you when you're tuning it up. And you can just place it back in and tighten it up some more. So, so now, bring the string up to the headstock. So up at the headstock, 
We're just going to do this same as any other guitar. Bring it straight through. Measure back enough slack so that you can get two or three windings on the wound strings, three or four windings on the treble strings. So for this wound string, I'm going to measure it back about one fret's distance, and that'll give me enough slack. And the plain strings, I would measure back about two fret's distance. Wind it up. Make sure all the windings are going down here. This is the same as you would on any Stratocaster, Les Paul, any, any other electric guitar. You can watch uh, some of the other restring videos for a little more in-depth on this. So, now we want to tune the guitar. Use your digital tuner, get it into pitch. Now it's important at this point that you tune all six strings and not just the one you replaced. Locking trem guitars are very, very precise technology. If you change the tension on one string, it will affect the other five. So you can't just focus on the one string you that you just changed. You have to make sure that you tune all six of them. So even if you're going to change all six strings, again, I strongly recommend if you've never done it before, change one string tune the whole guitar. Change the second string, tune the whole guitar. It'll keep everything more stable, it'll prevent any other adjustments from going out. If you do it that way, there's almost no chance that uh, you're going to have any problems. So now, with the entire guitar in tune, We can cut off the tail, and we can lock the nut back down again. Once I do this, anything I do up here at the tuner doesn't actually affect the string because it's locked out. Now, if I need to make fine adjustments, the fine tuners here on the bridge will allow me to do that. If I find that I have one of them all the way maxed out in either direction and I still can't get it in tune, I have to unlock the nut and make an adjustment at the headstock tuner. But if you've gotten it close uh, at the headstock, the fine tuner should provide you more than enough adjustment to get the guitar into tune. And if I run out of adjustment, I can just unlock the nut, reposition the string with the headstock tuners, and then continue to use the fine tuners from there. So that's really all there is to it. Locking trim guitars can be a little bit intimidating at first, but follow those steps and it's really not that complicated. You shouldn't have any trouble. So once again, I'm Mike Robichaud for Long & McQuaid. Thanks for watching.